because at the very least, saying that leads is where you put your prospects is open for serious misinterpretation, if not borderline misleading. So if you search the internet for a consensus on what are Salesforce leads, you'll usually come up with a similar definition of basically saying leads is where you put your prospects. And I have a serious issue with that because I think that that is seriously misleading. So I want to put together a video to answer three key questions. Once and for all, define what are Salesforce leads, who in your organization should be using leads, and then should you use leads in your organization? And a great story to talk about this was about four years ago when we were working with a customer down in Miami that had Salesforce implemented for them already. And when they reached out to us, they basically said that Salesforce just wasn't working that well and that was extremely cumbersome. Everyone from management to the sales agents seemed to share that opinion and we were curious as to why. So one of the things that we did to start investigating the story was that we sat down with one of the sales agents on a sales call. And besides the fact that he opened up the CRM before he made the call to look up some basic notes on the, on the prospect, it became clear that there was a serious problem where as soon as the call started, everything resorted back to pen and paper. And here was this sales agent conducting a call, taking everything down in a notebook, which in itself was okay to start, but the situation started getting a lot worse when it became clear that the sales agent was going to get the sale and without a doubt started taking down information like credit card numbers in the notebook. And the thought came to me, this guy has a notebook with dozens if not hundreds of credit card numbers. And not only that, the entire company is doing the same thing because this is how they learn to adjust for how cumbersome the system was. And it was a real serious issue. So. To make matters even worse, once the call was done, this sales agent had to go and enter the information into the system. And he had to basically take the lead, convert the lead, go to the opportunity that got created, enter opportunity information, enter opportunity products, come back to the opportunity, enter payment information, submit it to an operations person to run the transaction and then notify the customer. So we start seeing how cumbersome the story was and you can kind of put yourself in their shoes and understand why they had to resort to notebooks for as ludicrous as it sounds. And one of the big concerns that they also had was the simple fact that they just didn't know where information belonged. The case in point was that they were saying there were a lot of times there was confusion between leads and contacts and there was some sort of annoyance because there were a lot of contacts that got moved over from leads and they wanted to move them back to leads because they just were not good prospects. One of the things that you quickly realize once going through this story is that if you apply that consensus of leads as a place where you put your prospects in, then by definition, this company with this cumbersome Salesforce implementation technically fits, which is just ludicrous to consider. So if you look at it, we have to start by defining leads because at the very least, saying that leads is where you put your prospects is open for serious misinterpretation, if not borderline misleading. So once and for all, what is a lead? And we can define lead by simply making a small change to that sentence. Leads is where you put your unknown prospects. Bottom line is that the leads is a bucket of unknowns where you want to drop as much data as you can for someone to sift through it to see what's good or not. And whatever is good goes to the sales team. Now, a great important note of that is that we have to talk about the large stages of a lead. You may have many different steps in qualification, but at its base, you're talking about leads, marketing qualified leads, sales qualified leads, and basically a customer. Now the biggest differential between a lead and a marketing qualified lead is that a marketing qualified lead, you know whether it's tomorrow or 10 years from now that you want to do business with that individual or that organization. It's as clear as day with that. And they might not be ready for you right now, either because they're stuck on a contract, they're happy with who they're with, but you know that that customer or that prospect fits a demographic of someone who would be a good customer for you in the future. 
And as soon as you have that, you have a marketing qualified lead. And that is the line in the sand that must be drawn for you to convert the lead and pass it over to the sales team. Which brings me to my second point of who should use leads in your organization. And it clearly shouldn't be sales. So the departments that usually take on this responsibility are the marketing, inside sales, or sales operations team, depending on who you have and how you organize within your organization. But the clear point of it is that leads, as this bucket of unknowns, should basically be used, particularly just for going through what's good and what's bad. If you're looking for how Salesforce justifies it, you can see it that even their default lead status, the furthest lead status that they have, the very last one, is qualified, which kind of points out that even Salesforce intends you for you to take this record all the way to the point that it's qualified and once it is, you're done. Case closed, move on, and suddenly there's no reason for that lead ever to come back or unconvert itself because again, whether it's tomorrow or 10 years from now, you know that you want to do business with them and they should become what's called a prospect account. By terminology, basis, you have a marketing qualified lead. So it's important to note that because a lot of times there's confusion because they don't want to convert leads because they say, well, leads have certain functionalities that I don't want to lose. I want to be able to market them and campaign to them. Well, a lot of times people don't realize that you can campaign a prospect account or a prospect contact just as well as you can market a prospect lead. There is no difference between the two from a functionality perspective in Salesforce. So you're not losing any functionality by converting someone. Now, the final piece is who should be not using leads in your organization? And as we mentioned, that is your sales team. And stop and think about the story that we shared. If you have a sales group, sales agents that no longer have to go between leads and contacts, you're simplifying their day to day so that way they can focus on what they do best, which is selling. I couldn't think of a call center that wouldn't care about its efficiency and the simple thought process that they had to basically do double entry was taking time away from the phones. And for me, it was crazy to think that they were okay that this was just the norm, this was how the system was set up and this is how we had to work with the system and they were carrying on with this for as long as they did before we got involved. So the final piece is should you in your organization use leads? And that is usually something that we cover with two basic questions. And the first one is do you have a department or at least an individual that is dedicated to qualifying leads in a full-time capacity? Because if the answer to that is no, then you should not be using leads or it would be very cumbersome for you to use leads because as we're realizing is that there's a lot of complexity between knowing which tab to navigate to and sometimes even though Salesforce is a very powerful platform, Complexity might not be your friend and you might want to simplify that as much as possible. But the second question is, do you have pre-qualified data that's going in your system? And I can give you two examples. One, if you go to trade shows and you rent a badge scanning tool, if you get hundreds, maybe thousands of people that stop by your booth and scan their badges, once you leave the trade show and you have that Excel file with all of your data, you're gonna quickly realize that while you do have some qualified people there that would be potentially good customers, you're also realizing that you had people that just stopped by for some free pens, or maybe you had some students that were stopping by interested in an internship, but regardless of the point, no one there in that segment would be a good prospect for you. And leads is the perfect place for you to dump that data for you to filter it out and see what's good and what's not good from this trade show. Good example against using leads, if you're talking about pre-qualified data, is that if you're a car dealership and you have a list of people whose leases are ending within the next 90 days, because here you have a list of individuals who have a history of working with dealerships, who have a history of leasing cars, and 
that at the very least within the next 90 days are going to more than likely need a new car because they're going to have to turn their current one back in. That lead is as qualified as it comes. So at that point, if you have lists similar to that in nature, what you want to do is basically put it in prospect accounts because the job that you would do in the leads object is already done for you. So in that scenario, it wouldn't do you any benefit to dump it as leads first and then have to worry about converting everything a second later. And the final piece that I want to put together is that understanding leads is crucial. And I think it's really important to put this together because I think that a lot of companies jump into leads head first and take their own definition of what leads should be and a lot of times I've seen that people get confused and implementations end up being cumbersome because of these self definitions. So if you have some interesting lead strategies that you have been using successfully or you have something that you'd like to add, make sure to add a comment below and then also like and subscribe so you can be notified the next time we have a video up and running.